Chris Wilson, the brewmaster of Weyerbacher Brewing Company, Eastern Pennsylvania. It's good to be back here. I haven't been here in a while. Welcome back. Cheers. Cheers. So, uh, a little double simple. Yeah, a lot has gone on in the past couple of years. You know, You've, uh, can you talk a little bit about like the new expansion? What like what you know what led up to the expansion? Well, what led up to the expansion is not being able to make enough beer. I mean, uh, we're moving from. 20 barrel tanks to 40 barrel tanks to now 80 barrel tanks. So th that just, we kept adding tanks and adding tanks and we're 20 feet from our visitor center at this point. So we have nowhere else to go. Uh, and you can't go up in this building. Uh, so we're limited to- So how many barrels you could have per thing, yeah. Cause yeah. I, I think, cause a lot of breweries will get like 200 barrels, 400 barrels, and a lot of breweries are doing the outdoor 800 barrel things now. Sure, yeah, and that's still an option uh, down the road, but uh, you know, in the short term, that would be a huge jump for us. So we're we're doing a a big enough jump from going to in one year from going to a twenty barrel um, per batch to eighty barrels. That's still a pretty big. You now right. we've done a lot of forty barrels, but we would still brew twice to fill those tanks. I mean, talking about barrels, like you distribute to about like thirteen states. So how many like how many barrels per year are you hoping to grow to? Well, that is a great question. We'll probably be somewhere around 15 this year. Um, and we'd like to keep it lowish next year, but I, I think lowish is going to be, instead of 50% growth, it's only 30. So it will be... Slow growth. Yeah, yeah something somewhere between 18 and 20. Right. I mean, so one thing I was surprised to hear recently is that, like, the last chance IPA is replacing the hops infusion. Like, what, right. what, what, what is that? Can you explain a little bit about that? Why, how it came to be? Yeah. Well, yes. Uh, while I liked hops infusion, uh, it was a good seller, it wasn't a great seller. So everything else started se out selling it, outpacing right. it. So our double Simcoe, our, our Blizzard Idiot Barley Wine, those are big beers. Um, and we use our IPA to grow yeast for uh, our other beers. So we had a we had a bit of a problem. We're either going to have to buy an expensive yeast uh, propagation system to grow yeast, or we just get an IPA that sells better. Um, so, you know, while hops infusion say multi IPA has a lot of malt character, that's not what the customers want right now. They want lighter body, more hop forward beers. So we set out. We did a series of them last year. We did six new IPAs and that was uh the winner so it oh, was okay, cool. called crimson when we did the uh the test batches and that became last chance and it went year round as soon as we started brewing it all right so um a lot of people know you for your double simcoe right but uh so in the banana so, and because your barrel h beers are a little more limited release can you just talk a little bit about your barrel program here like the few beers you have in barrels and what makes your barrel program special? Um, well, we started, I can't even remember how many years ago, we started with uh, Insanity. You mean the whiskey barrels, right? Yeah, or just the sours, the, any, any of your beers that are aged in barrels. Yeah, well, we started with, uh, we did a series of um, whiskey barrel aging beers that we already made. So we still have, uh, three of those are actually still in production. Uh, two of them are year-round beers. Uh, Old Heathen becomes Heresy and uh, Blithering Idiot becomes Insanity. Those are um, very popular and very uh, good sellers for us. So, right. you know, that leads to further experimentation. So we'll take barrels that we had Insanity in and then we put Reserva in those. So that's uh, taking, it'll have less whiskey character because we've already used it. Right. And then we'll put, um, you know, we'll pitch uh, Brett into it, add raspberries and you get Reserva. Well, that was nice, and that kind of took us another step down the road, and we started doing some wine barrel beers, like the, which we have here, which uh, uh, Rapture and uh, Sour Black. Um, we, we already have those barrels filled again with a uh, uh, kind of a lactic forward beer, which is going to be nice. Right, so do you ever down the line seeing doing like a, kind of like a Flemish red or a goose which you have to blend like different years together? Well, I mean a goose would be pretty much out of the question for 
a long time because we haven't started that program yet. That's right. a program that takes a long time to establish. Right. Some Belgian breweries even get, get goose and then they blend it themselves. Right. Now that would be kind of interesting to start doing that <laughs> in the States, you know, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not opposed to doing anything. You know, you call it a goose, I would say, you know, we're going to do our own variation of that. Uh, I like tradition, but you know, that it doesn't do uh, anybody any good for me to try to make a Belgian uh, goose. You know, it's, right. We'll take our own, uh, we'll be inspired by that, put our own spin on it. That's why our beers say American Wild Ale. That's what it is. You know, we've been inspired by what the Belgians do, and then we make our own uh, right. you know, variations right. on that. And Rapture, I would say, is close closest to a sour, I mean, a uh, Flemish Red, a Flemish red uh, that we, we were going to get to. So. And so any other new beers in the works right now? Ah, I mean, there's always new beers in the works. But we got, <laughs> I mean, we have our uh, uh, Brewer Select Series, uh, so we'll have X-Ray coming out. Uh, that'll be October, and what's September, that? October. Don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's just the next name. Uh, uh, and then after that will be Yankee, and Yankee is always, sorry, Yankee will be our holiday release. It'll be uh, in November. And that beer we try to make uh, one way or another holiday related. You know, something that you might have uh, for a dessert beer. Last year we did Tango, and that was a, a Belgian quadruple with cherries. Which, oh, cool. Yeah, so something a little different. So that one, you know, we're thinking maybe uh, move away from the the fruit beers and maybe just go American Strong Ale, um, just a big hearty beer for uh, cool. after dinner. I mean, I guess one last question would be that, like, a lot of breweries, like, like with your Brewer Select series, a lot of breweries nowadays have those lines so that they could really, like, show their dedication to their local market. So do you ever plan on, like, you know, taking some of those beers and making them that have gotten, like, good reviews and making them part of your lineup or seasonal or special release at some point? Sure, we've done that already. We've, um, uh, Verboten was uh, the first beer we actually did in the series. It was Alpha. So uh, that became, there were a series of changes in the name uh, Verboten. Uh, we had Charlie became Fireside. Uh, I'm trying to think, yeah, I think we had one more. Um, but yeah, yeah, we'll definitely do that. Yeah, that's uh, always that's a part of the goal, really, is to come up with new ideas. You know, we try to not put boundaries on it because it's important to you know, get our employees excited about it, get them uh, being creative, come right. up with a new recipe. So we right. try not to put too many boundaries on what that could be. I mean, that relates to your yeah. overall mission here. Is that like you don't. While you do, let's say, like, Double Simcoe's a double IPA, you really don't like to hold yourself to a style guideline. You like to, like, your anniversary beers especially, like, you like to say, uh, it's my, it's Chris Wilson's or Weyerbacher's version of whatever recipe I'm coming out with instead of That's saying right. it has yeah. to be something else. That's right. So it puts us in a bit of a bind when we're trying to uh, enter at GABF or something, but, you know, I'll take that. Yeah, I'd rather be... Uh, Right. I mean, if there's, if the, I mean, if there's one thing like you could tell, I guess my viewers of the craft beer community about like where your, where your direction is and what you're trying to represent, like what would it be? Uh, one thing. That's like, I was like a, a certain message like that you're trying to like portray when you. We make, we try to make you know, eccentric beers, and we strive for big flavor. I mean, that's what it is. We we don't necessarily we have a lot of big alcohol beers, but. We strive for big flavor, that's our goal. We want uh, flavorful, uh, creative beers. That's what we want. All right, sounds good. Well, this uh, unfiltered double cinnamon is pretty flavorful. So it's pretty good. Definitely yeah. been successful. Cheers. So thanks again for having us, and uh, we're looking forward to reviewing a lot of your beers in the future. Excellent, thank Cheers. you.